Okay, in here I, I rattle it. I know it says it contains one. I know this bearing, and it's really funny. This was made, this is a little bit younger than us. <laughs> this was born in April 1967. That's just a month after Patrick was born. What's nice is the spacer is also ground. So somebody, you know, so whoever made this, you know, put a lot of effort in making this. And it goes on really nice, very tight. And so, and see, so we, we, need to cut, we need to cut this off at about 3 8 This is the size we use. If you remember when we demonstrated the tapping machine and we showed this plate and we were doing, you know, we were threading a few of the holes in front of you. Uh, this, is, this is the bit we use uh, for the one millimeter threaded hole. So you start with a 0.8 millimeter hole, I mean, and then you tap it one millimeter. Hello, and welcome back. This is Shop Adventures 23. I'm Lance, and this, what is this next to me? Well, that's Patrick. <laughs> He's come from behind that camera. And how does it feel to be out here in front of the camera, Patrick? A little scary. Oh, scary. <laughs> no, I'm not just kidding. I have both hands up on the table for on purpose to prove that I'm not holding a firearm on <laughs> Okay, he didn't want to do this, but I think that the, uh, it's just better that we do our introductions together. We do the show together. Yeah. You know, we're, we're just testing things and trying them anyway. No, it's good to be here. It's good to be up front in the intro. What did we learn last week? I guess we learned a lot about how loyal our following fans and our viewers are, huh? Oh, yeah. You know, let me mention, you know, that was an hour and a half video, as you well know. <laughs> and um, I'll tell you, you know, usually we try to upload our videos and we try to publish them live at 10 p.m. every Monday night. And, but this was so large, the length was just so long. I mean, the processing time from YouTube, I mean, even that in itself took hours and hours. And, and, and I was just, we were waiting, waiting, watching YouTube. And finally, a little after 1 a.m., we were able to finally hit that publish button. And, and when we did finally get to uh, hit that publish button, we were cringing just because, you know, we felt bad, really. You know, we realized an hour and a half video is just way too long for a Shop Adventures video. It's, you know? it's perfectly fine for the educational series, and I think that's what you validated in this, uh, yeah, this week's uh, episode. And that's what we talked about. I told Lance, you know what? This made us realize that that would have been a good candidate uh, as an educational series video. You know, because it got into the little details, a lot of little details, and and what you guys didn't see is it did take a lot of research as well you know we had to really be oh. sure we were accurate and get other people and good thing we did because we have a pretty smart audience don't yes. we yes uh we got so many comments and a lot of private messaging in regards to this albrook check series deal that showed us that these people that are you guys really watch this channel and you really really pay attention to details Yes, yeah. that's for sure. I would say just slightly, especially Vernon. Oh yeah, that was a fun. I incident. wrote Vernon and found out Vernon in Tennessee discovered some L ten twelve. Well, Lance comes, to, you know, he mentions to me. He says you will not believe it. He says this one video where you're making the bearing nuts uh, for the uh, tapping machine. Yeah, a few videos back. Yeah, yeah, and he says you won't believe it. Vernon said you were machining twelve L fourteen. I'm like, really? I never mentioned the metal. Not a word. Not and in the description either. Yeah, and I was so curious. I had to just go through the video real quick, and there was one shot, one video. In the chuck, in between the jaws. Yeah. In it just happens to say. 12L14. Partly. Yeah, I'm like, boy, our, our viewers are really detailed. So you guys really if, pay attention. If you ever think we're not under any pressure, <laughs> you'd be kidding yourselves. Um, anyway, what we did learn was, is that we have a great audience. They did suck all the oxygen, that, that topic did suck all the oxygen out of this last week's video. It literally stole the show from the tapping machine. Yeah. So it's not going to happen again. No, it won't. That's why we're going to do the pull-out educational series with just highlights from those pull-out educational series always placed into the CHOP Adventures, the weekly Monday night event. Right. That way you never miss anything, but if you really want to know how to do this little finite detail or that little finite, we're going to cover you. We've said this before. Right. Okay, let me, can I get into the topics now? Sure. Or do you want to steal more of my uh, show over here? <laughs> no, let's get started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, week's, uh, this week's topics, 
Uh, we're, we're going, I'm going to share some details about a Marshall, CE Marshall and Company lathes. Um, not, I got a couple cross slides I'm working on. I mentioned that last week. That's not what this is about. It's actually going to be about the milling head. Patrick's finished it. I show something uh, some mood happening. Yeah. And I have an uncanny question to ask you, our viewers, to help us, please. Yeah, that's very interesting. We're that hoping one. to get feedback on this. Pretty please. Yes. We just, we're historians, and we explain that, so I don't want to yeah. get into that. Yeah, then yeah. we go out from that nonsense where I get real work done. To, to funny land uh, in the workshop, we <laughs> Patrick goes and he's gonna do, uh, he's gonna do something for you. What what are we gonna do, Patrick? What are we gonna show today? Okay, we find. Okay, I'll just tell you, we finally complete the micro drill press. So and we demonstrate it for you. So that's a big plus. But you know what? You know, I thought it was just gonna be a simple little machine job <laughs> on my part. <laughs> and I I go out into the machine shop. I run into a few little mishaps. But we finally get past it and... It's hard work out there in the machine shop, isn't it? <laughs> 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 but we make it, we did make it happen. Yeah. So we're really excited to show you. I mean, we were just thrilled because, you know, not only do we complete the drill press, but it works beautifully. You know, we drill a hole for you and it just works. It's so accurate and the holes, I mean, little tiny holes are just beautiful under the loop. Yeah, they really yeah, are. I mean, we're so happy. We're just thrilled because, you know, you know, we never use I mean, we we mentioned it, you know, later that we kept our expectations really low yeah. because we've never this is one on, this guys, is one this machine. Thing's, this thing's well over 100 years old. It's so old. Right, and it's, and it's a machine we've never used. No, we just bought it. Yeah, so we we'll bought get into it. that in the video though. Yeah, we'll get in the video. So, so let's wrap ahead. up this week's video if I can with the uh Something we just want to share a little bit about watchmakers. Can we do it really quick? Yeah, and, easy. Sure. and then we're going to get out to work. No more talking. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't all talk, all radio or whatever over here. It was okay. my coffee. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, morning stomach. Okay. In the world of watchmakers, similar to that of the world of the tool maker and that of the machinist for the machine shop world, there's the watchmaker. And the watchmaker has two things going on. The watchmaker makes watch parts and watches, obviously, pocket mm -hmm. and wrist and such like that. The tools of the trade and the watches and the pocket watches are all basically considered to be in the hands of the current caretaker. Yes. That makes sense. Pretty much every tool we have here, the person that brightly ran it is no longer with us. So we are the next generation caretaker and we take great great pride and accuracy to build these correctly. Is that right? That's right. To rebuild and refurbish them. Yeah, and, and the point I want to make too is, you know, we hear stories, you know, you know, of people, they build these beautiful workshops with, you know, large inventory of machines, and then they don't make any plans. So when they pass away, the family has to deal with this, and they don't know what to do with all these machines. And it's really sad, you know, they, they likely, you know, get purchased from a, or, you know, Auction, worse, house. Yeah, auction house or worse if they're large machines they get scrapped and so we're trying you know just here on the same subject kind of so we're trying to ensure that you know we that these machines that we put so much effort restoring you know get get you know transferred to a new generation of you know young so, people that can so really we never own them. them right we never own them all we are is the caretakers but there's a big responsibility being a caretaker and the next generation of the caretakers that'll see these because we're only three percent Right around about 3% we estimate into our current inventory of machines and tools and accessories and so forth. Yeah, we have a lot to share. It's going to take about a decade um, to just get <laughs> through it all. And, and, and I mean, that, that that's making stuff and doing it. We're not going to sit here every day and show off some tools. No. It's not, we're not some show-off channel. What we want to share is just the whole culture, the whole history of how we see things. That's what we're doing. So, yeah. can I stop talking about dying or something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get out and let's get some lively work done, shall we? I agree. All right, yes. thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're out in the machine shop and Lance has an update for us. Hey, hi. Welcome back. I promised we weren't going to show any more marshals, but Patrick's out here to see me about one kind of marshal, and I got to tell you, I was doing, I mentioned last week's video, I would be doing a couple of uh, marshal cross slides. This is a tri-level cross slide I'm working on right now, and there'll be another one behind this. But that's not why I have you out here. I just want to share uh, all the methodical detail we'd like to go into here. And there's a reason why all that detail really works. Let me give you just a little hint. I got all this one done a few weeks back for Patrick, and this is a Marshall mill attachment. Okay, 
this is pretty unique and let me explain that I mean it, it isn't really rare it, it wouldn't have been it, it wouldn't have been except nobody ever bought any so it looks like I've only seen one in 30 years uh, besides this one there's one other that I've ever seen in 30 years it doesn't mean there's not a hundred of them out there but they, they just didn't sell you know you got milling attaches on the Atlas lathe you got milling attaches for literally any lathe you want in the watch world they make lathe attachments too and this is a Marshall milling attachments very technical but I gave to clean this all up I fixed it all up for Patrick and I gave it back to him and he reassembled it for me and you know over the years you just don't pay any attention I'm sure you guys in your shop get this you, you know the handle starts getting a little harder or this starts working a little tougher and you over time you don't recognize how tough and hard it was getting and you know basically the lesson Patrick and I have learned here is that we probably should rework our machinery a little more often I agree you like that idea Patrick because yes. it turned out to cause more work for us but but it's they're coming out fine in fact I just want to demonstrate Patrick worked really good on this this little milling attachment this this does milling it's really I, again we're back to like last week I wish we had uh, fill a vision yeah because boy is that nice it's exact it's got no very little to no backlash it's just a beautiful uh, piece yeah, see, I forgot it used to be that smooth. Yeah, it's really <laughs> nice because it, it was a little bit uh, harder than that. Let's just be nice about it before we took it apart. But, you know, you just grow, you just grow into oh, it. Oh, yeah, you do because you got to get the parts out the door. And we were always under pressure until we yeah. quit doing the work. Okay, so this milling head doesn't just mill. You know, you use your cross slides to, to, to turn it around and stuff like that. It does drilling. It does milling. It does drilling. It does milling. And it does grinding. So, you know, it's really a common occurrence to do grinding in the watchmaker world anyway. It's just part of it. Right, Patrick? Right. And it does. This installs on top of the cross slide. Yeah, here it is. This just holds up there. This is it. Yeah, it's a little T-nut. Yeah, nice uh, finish on it. It's a blue, a cold blue there. I don't know who did that. This is neat. So, okay, so I'm almost done here. Let me just go a little further. This is its power source, which, you know, this is the belt drive for it. So I call it the power source. It goes on the other end. This is my little draw bar. It's an eight millimeter draw bar. Uh, it takes a little eight millimeter collets. These are the, just little dust, cute little dust covers. One goes on each end. It's kind of neat. This is the main drive. This is it. This is the spindle. Uh, you'll see something, Patrick, to try. It, uh, it takes uh, angler, uh, what do they call it? Angler contact bearings. Angler contact bearings. It, it, uh, the 11 takes a match set pair, one on each end. Is that right? That's right. On the 11, they're exactly the same size yeah. at each end. Yeah. In this case, though, somebody got tricky. Well, we got a smaller diameter and a bigger diameter. Yeah, we don't understand why. The bigger diameter is up front and the smaller one's in the rear, but we've never seen that in a two-bearing arrangement, in an angler contact arrangement. So, yeah, it really baffles us. So one's off the shelf. You can cross-reference it. They're here. I think which one was it? Pat, the back of the front. I believe I'm I get, we, get, get, we got so many oh, okay. so many tools apart right now and so many being reassembled but it doesn't matter yeah it was one of them we were able to cross reference but the, but the other, other one, one wasn't so nice no. and you know when you're a, I call Patrick I can base it on our wallet and financial status around here I call Patrick a master researcher for finding things like like he's found that uh, uh, draw bar that he needed for another machine and stuff well, he's, he's never let us down. So he went shopping, found a little old man. The little old man had this wonderful little can. And I said, what did you buy? And he bought all the guy had, which unfortunately was only like three or so. Two of them. Oh, there was, that was it? Yeah. Oh, we were lucky because you know what? We needed two. We needed one for this mill, mill accessory, which is one of only two I've ever seen. And we needed one for the actual uh, Marshall lathe itself. Right? That's right. So they both require the same thing. So we were lucky. We got a pair of them. Uh, well, could be dinner. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm used to opening cans around here. I'm used to lots, based on our budget around here, I'm used to lots of beans and rice. I'm used to using a nice American-made can opener. <laughs> it's not a fancy can opener because we're not opening caviar. Like I said, it's beans and rice. So you do what you got to do. We have a really good time. <laughs> Let me whine a little more, shall I? Okay, what's really neat... And somebody out there, maybe you're going to know this. Chapter, can I, am I going to hold that right? Yeah, let's see if I can get it. Actually, get the other can. I think the print 
Or is that the one that's... This one looks a little better. Yeah, that one's a little bit... It's got some dents. Yeah, dents, but the print's a little darker. Let me get the other side. These are mil-spec bearings. Um, I, I know. I come from the aerospace the aerospace, aerospace industry. Perfect. And uh, okay. I know the mil specs, the AMS specs, and all that stuff. That's just that's just industry logo stuff for the military government real strict. Okay. Anyway, that's all, that's all I know about that. Okay. In here, I, I rattle it. I know it says it contains one. I know this bearing. And it's really funny. This was made... This is a little bit younger than us. <laughs> this was born... In April of 1967, that's just a month after Patrick was born. Right. So it's a little younger running around here. But we're going to open one, and we're going to do... This is called Shop Adventures for a reason. We're going to open one of these with well, you. Before you open it, yeah. remember, we want to see if anybody can... Oh, yeah. Well, I know one person might know, but I'm going to I'm gonna ask you anyway. You ever seen any... I, I remember the military times and all that, 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 that you know, maybe at sea or somebody... Maybe maybe they package these in cans to keep them to keep them from getting uh, uh, what uh, like rusted like or corroded rusted. from salt water. Or, right. Anyway, I, we think they're really neat. They're really hard to get. We're glad we got them because there is no cross reference. So these were what we had to have today. Yeah, we just wanted to see if any of our viewers, if they if they've seen that, if they. Yeah, can you give us? We're history buffs. Obviously, the kind of machinery we work on, everything we really cherish our history, huh, Patrick? Yeah. So maybe somebody knows. Yeah, it gives us a little details about it because we've never seen that before. If you tell us, we'll be glad to share it maybe in a next coming video or something. Say we got an answer for those. We know in this case it's bearings in the couch like sea rations, you yeah. know? Anyway, that was kind of neat. So let me put that over there. Oh, shit. Can I open it? Let's go. Let's oh, go it's like it. opening the present. <laughs> it's not even my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my fancy American can opener. I don't know, guys. I'm going to see what you see. Just take the time. Be patient with me. Mm -hmm. well, let's hope it's a bearing in there. <laughs> There's nothing like American-made bearings with an American-made can opener. I'm just... Oh, oh uh, there it goes. Look. <laughs> oh, it's not caviar. This is so funny. Isn't it neat? It's, it, it's new to us. Okay, so maybe this won't be exciting to some people, but it, it, this is happening real time, so here you go. Oh, yeah, it's glitched enough. This wrapped enough. That wax cosmetic paper. I know it well. Oh, yeah, look at that. I, used it, I use it in the aerospace industry a lot. I know this one. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's wrapped again? It is. Grade A, Type 2, Class 1. You want to show it? Marvel Wrap. Camera? It's called Marvel Wrap. It's Marvel Wrap. Oh, and this was produced in... Look at that. Produced a year earlier. A year, oh, wow. a year and a month earlier. Uh, March of 66. It's got its mill spec. Um, oh, the bearing. Oh, the inside of the can, let's see. Yeah, nothing else. Okay. What, this bearing name, Patrick, these are uh, new... new uh, Departure. New Departure is the manufacturer of this bearing. That's how we searched it. Um, and that was the end of these. These, we got them all. Oh, look at tinfoil. <laughs> Maybe that it's is, chewing gum. That is funny. Well, this is kind of fun. I hope you guys are... In, I like this stuff, guys. So I'm, I'm so glad we, we wanted to make sure we caught it on film. Instead of just opening it. That's like a mint. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me look. Okay, oh, yeah. so there's two pieces. Okay, so we had our foil. Little, okay, well, this is really military wrapped in it. Yeah. There it is. It's got cosmoline. It's got cosmoline on it. And there it is. Made in America. Yeah. Norma. Made in America. Oh, maybe they aren't new departure. Are they Norma? They are. They're Norma. Oh, they're Norma bearings. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm just learning like you guys. Yeah, Norma made in the USA. They're nice. Let me see. Uh, it's smooth. It is. Once you turn it, it takes a second. It, sure. It's a little hard after 50 years, guys. 51 years. 51 years. Almost 52 years. Oh, yeah, maybe. look. It's nice. Oh, yeah, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick knows that date. <laughs> Okay, well that is nice. That okay, is Norma, guys, we're sorry. I, I thought they were new departure because we—that's what I mean. We're building so much stuff for you guys and getting so much excitement ready for you. We got so much coming down the pipeline. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you, Patrick. Is that everything that I needed to share? Yeah, I think that covers put that back everything. Don't take care of it. Okay, guys, see you around. Bye. Thank you. Okay, we're out to see Patrick in the workshop. He's brought out an old friend he'd like to share with y'all and give you a little updates on. Hey, Patrick. Hello, guys. Yes, if many of you will recognize this, this is our German micro drill press. 
And, you know, we've been working on this on and off over the last few months. And this is probably the only machine we have that we never used before. You know, unlike the other uh, machines we've rebuilt or, or restored, you know, those are machines we were using for a long, for many years. Well, this one I had purchased, I had purchased actually this years ago, but it just sat on the shelf because it did have issues. So, but along with the other machines, we decided to finally put him into operation. So what we did was we powder coated him. Uh, it didn't come with a motor, so we had to uh, dig up a Bodine motor and it's a perfect fit. Many of you will remember, you know, we tried an older universal AC-DC motor and unfortunately that didn't work out. And we're really sad because it was an older motor that had the oil, um, the oil ports. And um, we just couldn't, I forget, uh, what was it, Lance? Do you remember we had some issues with the speed control, was you it? You can't, unless it's under, it couldn't do enough pressure, back pressure. Oh, like, you're right. Without the, if it didn't have any torque on the motor, it was going like 15,000 right. RPM. It's great for a pump motor. It has to be have constant right. pressure, back pressure. Okay, that's right. So we went with a DC motor, and it works great. With uh, we, we built this little enclosure, with, which we can control the speed. And then we have a little foot pedal. Uh, so I have it on right now. So I'll put it at 50%. And then just with a push of a foot switch. See? fully functional. It'll make your foot go again, will you? See, there's a little pedal. Okay, and then he's... Same you can control the speed. It's super slow. And we also um, made new bronze bearings. These are oil impregnated bronze bearings. And what was wrong with the old ones is it, they were so loose you could move the spindle around. So. So it was it, it was in a desperate need for a rebuild, but it's in perfect running condition. Okay, so we got it all working as you see it today, but we weren't happy. We gave it we gave the the machine so much attention, and it's like brand new. But the draw bar, see, this is the draw bar that goes into the spindle, and then a watchmaker eight millimeter collet goes into the spindle from the other side. And, you know, it's like a lot of, you know, like a bridge port that uses R8 collets, you know, same thing. And um, so we weren't happy with it. It's really worn out. The threads are all messed up. Um, it's just been, you know, just it's, it's an old machine. So originally, uh, one of the, uh, the last updates we gave recently was we were going to machine one of these. And then we were going to send it out to have it grit out uh, the outside ground and we had we couldn't do that uh in-house because we don't have a centerless grinder so uh we had asked people you know for assistance on that i think randy richard recommended uh solid rock solid rock that's right shop real nice family yeah. over there and uh i don't know where they are yeah but really nice great videos and so that was our intention but then at the last minute, I go, well, God, you know, that's a, you know. We actually ordered the material and we were going to start. Yeah, and we then, then gonna... all of a sudden, Patrick was doing a little homework. Yeah, I did a little homework. I said, you know what, before we go through all that hassle and sending this out, you know, let me see what I can find on the Internet. And I actually got lucky. Uh, I found I found a guy that has, I bought two of these from him. And what it is, is it's a aftermarket draw bar. And it's made to G bully specifications, and it just so happens to match the same dimensions of the old draw bar, with one exception. If you notice, if I match the shoulder on the bottom, so you can see it's just let's see, I think it's it'd be like that. So, so you can see it, the length is about what well, I'd say about three eighths too long. So. But what the nice thing is, it includes a little spacer, and the intention of the spacer is you can cut the spacer to the length that's needed for your machine. And that, that was really nice. So, and this is, what's nice is the spacer is also ground. So somebody, you know, so whoever made this, you know, put a lot of effort in making this. And it goes on really nice, very tight. And so, and see, 
so we we need to cut we need to cut this off at about three eight, and and this is how it's look. So it's gonna so with the spacer in here, it's gonna be like that, you know. So it'll be writing right here. Okay. So all I need to do, I don't need to touch this. This is perfect as is. I need I just need to go out to the machine shop, and then just put this on our large lathe. And really just do two op machining operations. I just need to cut off about 3 8 You know, I'll measure it exactly. Uh, just face it to make sure it has a nice smooth face. And then I'm going to give it to Lance. And Lance is going to deburr it, clean it up. You know, make sure it's all perfectly, you know, cylindrical and flat and, and whatnot. And then he's going to give back to me. And then we're going to bring you back here and we'll test it with you. So another machine being re rebuilt in this case, fully rebuilt, will be off the list and ready to help us. In the yes. Future. So this, yeah. So this will be the last time you see this machine. Oh, one thing before I forget. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. After we're done with this, the machine's going to go into operation. It's going to, and we're, we're going to uh, demonstrate for you. We'll we'll do a little bit of drill and maybe drill a couple of holes, just like we showed you the tapping machine. Okay, but the last thing, but this doesn't uh, affect uh, the uh, function, it only affects the cosmetics of this. Okay, if you see these oil ports to oil the bearings, you'll notice we made this temporary silicon little uh, Yeah, those are the little guys from my bead, I, I use those when I bead blast to block holes to keep them safe. While, right. While, and for some painting and stuff. And the powder coating. Cause yeah. Because these won't melt in the oven. They're the silicon or something. They're really, yeah. they're really neat. You cut them to the size you want. They fit every tapered hole and that's a beautiful set. Exactly. So, yeah. so, so this is only temporary, but it, it serves its purpose, you know, because before you use it, you just want to add a couple of drops of oil just to make sure there's sufficient oil all the time. And then you just want to cap it so that way no dirt, grit, or anything gets in here. Okay, but we do have, in the future, when we have our leaven lathe set up, uh, that'll be a little project of ours that we're going to share with you. We're going to actually, on the leaven lathes, we're going to machine little custom caps. And we'll make them really fancy and all that. You know, It'll be a nice little test run after the full rebuild of those levens as well. Right. So, yeah, so that'll be a fun little project. But, you know, for now, it's just cosmetic. But um, let's focus on this and let's get this done. Okay, we're off to the shop. Bye. Bye. Okay, we're back in from the machine shop to see Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Hey, guys. Okay, I think we got good news. Uh, but, um... Let's let me start from the beginning. Okay, the last video you saw, you know, I told you I was going to go to the machine shop and I had the tube I I was going to take to the lathe and do two machining operations. It was going to be the cutoff operation and the facing operation to basically face it to uh, to dimension on the length and then just to make it, you know, really nice, smooth and pretty. Um, but I ran into a problem. Okay, we know Okay, just uh, just to recap really quick. Okay, we have the draw bar. Okay, the draw bar we know the length is a little too large, and they and they the person that designed this and, and made this product they intentionally made it long because they include you know this tube, a long tube that goes over, and you're supposed to you know cut the uh, machine the tube to the length that you need for your machine. Okay, and that seems really easy. Okay, and you don't want to you don't want to touch the draw bar because the draw bar you know it's hardened, it's been heat treated, so you know you'd have to anneal it, uh, cut it, retap it, and then heat treat it again, temper it. I mean, we don't want to do all that. So, uh, so that that's fine. So I didn't touch the draw bar. Okay, so I took the tube, this tube, I'll call it a spacer a tube. I took it out to the machine shop, you know. And I just had assumed that they left this soft or a soft material only because it's intended to be machined. But I, I did a file test, you know, just to test the hardness. And I was really surprised, it was super hard. So I said, okay, you know what, before I go ahead and, you know, cut off to that dimension I need, let me do a little test at the end. And I'm so glad I did that. Um, what I, cause I, what I did first was I first faced it, and that went really well. I used a, um, a ceramic insert, a uh, lathe insert, uh, that's made to turn hardened uh, steel, and that just turned it per, I mean, no problems at all. 
Okay, the problem was when I went to cut it off and the tool I use is this cutoff tool. And, you know, I've, I've, I've gone through a lot of different cutoff tools. You know, I've, I've used a high speed steel blades. I've used different insert types. And this is, uh, I always forget the insert. The insert this uses are MGMN. And th this is such a great tool. I mean, I can, I can cut off up to uh, grade five titanium, no problem. I mean, it's just wonderful compared to other cutoff tools I've used. Okay, but problem is, is when I went to do this test on this piece, look at this, the little tip broke off. So that's how hard, that's how hard this is. And my best guess is it feels, it really turns, it turns like it's a tool still. Uh, so it's really weird, but it's definitely hard. And um, so, so because that failed, uh, what I ended up doing was we have a little chop saw that uses a uh, little tiny abrasive wheels So that's how I ended up cutting it uh, close to dimension. So, you know, the tube was about that big Okay, so what I did was I used a little chop saw, you know, slowly I you know uh, I just cut it. I left about a millimeter to you know extra length to play with and then once I was done with that, I chucked it up on the lathe, faced it uh, to dimension, and then I gave it to Lance. Lance, you know, deburred it. Uh, I think he lapped it a little on both sides just to make sure. A little sure. bit. Yeah, a little bit, just to he, make sure. He does such a great job using, you know, real machines out in the machine shop area <laughs> that I, I, have to, I have to show him how great he is, so I, yeah. I, I took it easy. Yeah. On him, yeah. But he did a great job. You know, both surfaces. He did the one I worked on, and then, you know, the... The one that the existing face from the manufacturer so both so it's perfect and then this gives you an idea see it's a little it turned out to be a little spacer that we needed it's actually it turned out to be 16.5 millimeter in length okay oh and i did bring the inserts these are the inserts i use for the cutoff tool corloy so and i use different types i use aluminum uh, for uh, they're just uncoated for aluminum and I have a coated version for steel and then another uh, coated one for stainless steel and yeah and I, I just can't speak highly enough of this tool just really like it and um, oh here let me get the uh, when well, we were having problems we were machining a special project for of a 6AL 4V titanium yeah um, it really was the rescuer because we just couldn't solve it, and that was actually what what uh, why Pat's like, praising it so high, highly. Right, because I tried so many different cutoff tools, and I'm I was just thinking, God, what am I doing wrong? But you know, once I found this guy, boy, what a night and day difference. Okay, um, I think we're ready to give this a try. Um, here, let me put this on real quick. Oh yeah, before I get to this, before we test it, um, you know, I'm always saying, you know, in past videos, you know, I'm always saying, you know, this machine takes eight millimeter watchmaker collets. This one takes 10 millimeter watchmaker collets. This one's 3C. And I'm just, you know, throwing these names out that you guys, some of you guys aren't probably familiar with. So what I did was, so that everybody gets a mental picture of the collet size I'm talking about, I brought all the collet sizes that we use here. Uh, from the very smallest, obviously, and then to the largest. And I'll just go over them really quickly. Okay, the biggest one is a 5C collet, and this is probably the most common uh, type. That's that, the type we use to take the Albrook check apart. That's right. This is what we use this for two purposes. We use this size for uh, in the collet blocks, and then we also use it in our collet check on our larger lathe in the machine shop. Okay. The next size down is 3C. And this we use on two machines. Uh, we do have a couple of 11 head, lathe headstocks that use this. And then our Barker, uh, we oh, won't, we won't. <laughs> the Barker mill. We aren't gonna divulge the, uh, what, what exactly it's for. We'll just say that it's for the Barker machine. That's right. <laughs> we just love those secrets around here. <laughs> okay. Okay, the next one, this is the 10 millimeter collet. And this is also referred to as a D size collet. 
and uh, uh, we have a couple of 11 headstocks that use this size and I think that's about it okay but this is really good this we like this size this is a really good size for precision and accuracy and as you can see it's a little larger than the next smaller size which is the eight millimeter or also referred to as a WW watchmaker call it okay and this is probably I'd have to say this is probably the most common and used size we use here in this workshop uh, this is the size that actually this little micro drill press uses and we also have a couple of 11 lathe uh, headstocks that use this size and that, that goes in that draw bar you're just working on right now for the drill press right for this micro drill press here and you know it, it, this is used in the 11 uh, drill press and all the 11 assess lathe accessories use this that have the little spindle so it's real i mean it's used everywhere so most common okay and the last call it this little tiny one this is a six millimeter Gosh, let me hit my big focus <laughs> <laughs> okay and this was uh this isn't very common these days i think this was this was like one of your first sizes that were created like in the early 1900s i believe and so we do have a lathe, an old lathe, Lorch lathe that uses this size, uh, but we don't use it, guy. It's just mainly just to have. But um, but uh, you don't see this size used very often because this size was actually replaced by the eight millimeter call it or the WW call it. Just because, now that eight millimeter, that's something they're going to see a lot when we're out here uh, running these machines. Yeah, definitely the most common call it we're going to be using here. I'm real familiar with that one. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I just wanted to share all those with you. Just so now that, you know, when I start, you know, saying all these different sizes, you kind of have a mental picture, you know, what I'm referring to. Okay. Okay, I think we're ready. Oh, wait a minute. Can I go past you for a second? I gotta, oh. I got to do show and, show and tell, guys. Sure. I'm probably going to get in trouble after this video is turned off. But, see, we've been working really hard. And so the lemons are getting ready to... Uh, come out and make their debut and those are their collets. That's every single size in the eight and the ten millimeter that are made. Um yeah these are just you know each box is a full set and but we have multiple sets. Because we have depending. multiple lanes yeah, through at the same time. Like this is a full metric set for eight millimeter and then we have a couple of uh ten or I think two or three sets of the ten millimeter full set collets and then we have one or two sets of the imperial size collets and and we have the square collets a hexagon collet you know whole collets and um, yeah we just want to share some of our some of our arsenal we're going to be using to make our products and so yeah we're really we're excited. all geared up and ready to go okay so let's okay so this how this works is okay as you can see see the spacer not not too large so i'm really happy about that so we just put it on like this, put it in the spindle, and okay, move this table out of the way. Go well, just a little bit better angle here, sure. guys. I want I just was trying to keep the whole machine in the picture, but you know it has a motor. Okay, there's a eight millimeter collet. Okay, and a little drill bit. Uh oh. Okay, this is a 0.8 millimeter drill bit. Okay, okay, and this is the size. Um, this is the size we use. If you remember when we demonstrated the tapping machine, and we showed this plate, and we were doing, you know, we we're threading a few of the holes in front of you. Uh, this is this is the bit we use uh, for the one millimeter threaded hole. So you start with a 0.8 millimeter hole, I mean, and then you tap it one millimeter. Okay. Okay, well, make sure it's basically. This machine runs so quiet now, I guess we wish we would have rebuilt it years ago, but we're glad we didn't so we could share it with you on camera over the last uh, several months, huh, Patrick? Oh, yeah. You know, we were really surprised, you know, we weren't getting our hopes up on this machine because, you know, like we told you, you know, this machine's been sitting on the shelf for years. <laughs> so when we, when we decided to restore it, 
you know, we kept our expectations really low, <laughs> but we were really surprised. I mean, you'll see. Let me turn it on really quick without anything. So you can just see, I mean, there's no, what's nice is because we remachined these bronze bearings, I mean, the spindle is tight. There's absolutely zero, I mean, no detectable play, I should say. And then um, and you can see the drill bit. There's no wobble. I mean, it's very, the spindle is very true. So very lucky. You got that, Lance? I got it. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and drill our first hole. Okay, I'll admit, I did cheat. I did test this on one hole. One. <laughs> I was we didn't anxious. want to film any, any big injuries here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see. Let me try this hole. Let me make sure. Okay, let's go with that hole. Am I obstructing you at all? No, you're not. You're perfectly okay. fine. Perfect. No shadows. Perfect. Let's give this a shot. So look at that nice chip. I mean, it's just working great. Don't worry, guys. I'm watching to make sure he's not re-drilling the hole he already drilled. So he has to drill a new real one. <laughs> Sounds great. Yes, it's that's so it. nice, and that's it. I don't think we're going to get rich selling our scrap chips, are we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just see if, if I can point it out. Okay, that's the hole we just drilled right there. Let me get down right there. I think we got it. Yeah, and looking at my loop, I mean, it's just perfect. Symmetrical, and just really, it's really clean. So we're, I mean, we're just thrilled, happy beyond belief how well this drills. So this is really going to be a nice addition. So we're actually, so... This we're gonna consider this finalized. She's all done. Yeah, uh, you won't. We weren't. We aren't gonna bring this out anymore and show it to you. Just until, join the tapping machine. Yeah, until you actually see this uh, doing something, making actual parts. Yeah. So so yeah. So this is officially done. So we're really happy. So I think we're gonna focus on the eleven lathes this uh, upcoming week. Eleven, eleven. Yeah. So thank you. All right. Thanks, Patrick. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you leave us one of those comments, maybe we have something we can answer. We will never leave a question unanswered. Thank you.